All right, hello, hello. Happy Monday, everybody. Everybody's having a good day, a good weekend. I'm so happy. It actually is sunny out. It's 70 degrees today. Holy cow. Only wait forever for this weather to turn. But finally, finally, finally. And uh, it's a nice day. I hope it's nice where you are. And uh, we got a lot to talk about today. We got a lot to talk about. The things, all foreclosures are 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 on the rise, so to speak. Uh, foreclosures are going to cause the demise, of the increase of home prices, so to speak, by 5%. We're going to kind of dive in and talk about whether that's a reality or uh, something make-believe or something improbable or probable or somewhere in between. So, uh, and then we'll cover some st- other stuff along the way. So if you are uh, jumping in, feel free to uh, leave a comment. If you're watching this after the fact, leave a comment, leave a question. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, but uh, as I often do on these live streams, it's always more fun to uh, have a friend to talk to, get another piece of, another perspective, you know, in the mix and, uh, you know, have a good conversation. So uh, coming all the way from Texas, deep in the heart of Texas, is my friend, your friend, all the way from Austin, Texas, Miss, Mrs. Angie Ufumata. Hey, oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on, wait. There, there it is. I, I botched it. One of these times, I will get the cheering down. I just, uh, I don't have a, I don't have a soundboard yet. So that's okay. Listen, we're you know gonna what I'm improvise. Like, I'm trying to like click, 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 and and it just like it just. I need one of those cool like podcasting boards with all the slides oh, on. Like you'd be like a 1980s DJ, those which is like totally cool. the music I was playing today. I heard that. I'm like. Yo, the 80s. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. I love it. Gets me in the mood. How are you doing? I'm doing good here in the good old Tejas, you know? Deep in the heart of Texas. Got a little, <laughs> little country music. I promise that will be the only time I will sing. So <laughs> I was I was in a back in the day before real estate, I was in a I was I was in the band, but I did not sing. Oh, I you did like, not sing. I, I play piano. I play keyboards, right? Okay. You That's know, what I, was ask I did you, not. I did not have a microphone. No, I have a microphone. Listen, There's don't a- give me a mic either. <laughs> no. I mean, unless you're trying to get a small animal out of your house, that's when you can call me. Roger that. All I'll right, send you. right on out. Good, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got we got some interesting things to talk about. I think you're gonna, you know, being from down in Austin. I think you're going to bring a, a nice perspective on what's going on. There's all kinds of stuff going on down there. And, yeah. uh, you know, of course, we're looking at this from a from a national scale, all this news. So uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, your, your perspective. But um, you, re- you want to just jump right in? Let's just, go. Let's get right into it. So came across this article and, and uh, you know, I mean, everybody's talking about home prices going up. Like this is not new news, right? This is not new news. This is not so, Oh my gosh, newsflash, newsflash. See, this is where I need one of those podcasting things. So I go beep, 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 beep. Right. Anyways, that's pretty good. I I digress. (laughs) Uh, but you know, this is not new news that, that home prices that, you know, people are talking about home prices going up further. Um, but what I thought was interesting is just, you know, how, you know, how, how this article went into it, um, and why, you know, what their, you know, um, what their explanation for it was. And then, uh, and then I kind of wanted to put a little twist cause I did a little bit of a research on foreclosures as well that I want to kind of, kind of touch on as well. So I'm going to see if I can, uh, bring up this article. Let's take a look. And let's have, let's have a chat. Let's have a chat. So this was on the business insider. Uh, this was on Tuesday, just a, just a little over uh, under a week ago, about six days ago, home prices are poised to jump another 5% this year as market, as the market is even tighter than it was in 2023. Yeah. Uh, it says, uh, home prices will continue to climb this year as the housing market isn't nearly as loose as prospective home buyers might think, according to Capital Economics. The research firm pointed to the recent uptick in housing inventory with new listings on the market up 16% compared to levels last year. That's renewed some hope that home prices will eventually come down or slow their pace of increases, but housing affordability is unlikely to improve. The firm said, forecasting another 5% surge in home prices. Uh, they go on to say, while new prices, new listings show a great number of homes sitting 
uh, homes hitting the market. Active listings are still about 400,000 short of normal levels, capital mm -hmm. economics. So estimated, which estimates an imbalance of supply and demand is still weighing on affordability. So I was looking back at the numbers for the pre-pandemic um, because I feel like, I feel like, you know, we, we get all excited, right? Like it's all relative in, in terms of like inventory. Um, it's all relative in terms of like, oh, there's, there's, you know, a 10% increase. Well, if there's only 50 homes on the market, that's like five homes. Yes. Woo. -hoo. I'm not yeah. bringing out the cake and sell, you know, popping the cork on the, on the wine, on, on the champagne because of five homes. But, it, but it's like, oh, 10% sounds like a lot. It does. 5% sounds like a lot, but well, you know, we'll see. But, uh, um, the inventory. So what was interesting is that the inventory, well, let me ask you, Angie, mm -hmm. we'll, little, we'll play a little game. Play a little, oh, little game. And there's no rub. You, you're not going to fail. I'm not going to kick you off. <laughs> Life <laughs> Life okay. Inventories for on a now national scale. Yeah. Right? So we're talking somewhere, million something. Uh, inventory levels pre-pandemic. And you're super smart. You probably know this. Take a guess of what, you know, pre-pandemic, like 2019, right before pandemic. What would you say the pre-pandemic inventory levels are? Oh. This is when I need the Jeopardy sound. You want, you want in terms of rooftops? Yeah. So oh. like how many homes, how, what was the, how many homes, how many single family homes were on the market? Would you, would you guess? Okay. Pre-pandemic. Pre-pandemic. I probably well, say 200,000. No, 1.4 million. That's Girl, nuts. Girlfriend, girlfriend. No, 1.4 million, which is a three month supply. Right. And for those watching, that's not the, bad. No, it's, it's absolutely not. So, so for those watching the month supply of inventory tells us kind of a relativity in terms of how healthy the market is, how balanced the market is. You're never going to have a completely balanced market. No. It's not going to be a, you know, you can't make both parties happy. You can, buyers and sellers can't be happy at the same time. It's either gonna, the, the seesaw is going to go one way or another. So on a healthy, healthy market would be like, five to six months. And what that means nice. is if every single home, if we had no new inventory, inventory button, stop, no new inventory, but we had the same pace on which the houses were selling, how long would it take to sell every single house on the market? And on average a healthy supply would be five to six months. Well, mm -hmm. in 2019, it was a three month supply, 1.4 million homes. Um, of course, now, according to this, this, this article is saying 400,000 short. I think it was more than that. Mm -hmm. My numbers, when I did my own independent uh, research, I'm not, a, I'm not the capital, um, what is it, the capital economics the research capital group, but, um, you know, I just from checking out a couple different websites and whatnot, I was coming up with about 700,000 homes yeah. on the market now which is substantially less. That's less than three. That's not even close to three months. That's probably um, probably like a month. What would you say about a month and a half? Yes. It's less than half. You know what I mean? So um, what are your, th I mean, that's, that's, I was, I was not surprised about that, but right. uh, you know, cause it does seem, but it is like deceiving, right? It seems like we've had a couple more homes come to the market, but it's not as it, like, we're still like playing catch up. Do you know what I mean? Yes. In terms of inventory, I was taking a look at this just for in the Austin market. I know the last couple of months, we have been inching closer to about four months worth of inventory in certain areas, um, which is which is great. And people are excited about it. But it's just like what you said. You know, if there's if there's 50 homes on the market and that's a 10 percent, that's five, you know. Five homes. Right. Or five. Um, what do you call it? Oh, my God. I just lost my train of thought. Um of, of an increase. You're, you're basing that just based on five homes that have closed. Right. So in Austin, we are seeing more and more homes go to market and which is nice. It's just not enough though, for the amount of activity that's happening uh, for buyers. So we have a lot of folks still moving to the area. If you're in a larger um, metropolitan area, like I am, then that means that people are just waiting on the sidelines at the moment. So we're seeing yep. a lot more of that, you know, Yep. But in terms of feeding the appetite of those buyers and being able to, you know, get folks in their contract, that's still a, a tricky deal. Yeah, I think what's happening is that, you know, we have, 
you know, when they, when they talk about, you know, that there's an uptick, um, you know, uh, new listings on the market up 16% compared to levels last year. The reason why we don't have as many homes on the market, like you'd be like, oh, well, we should have 16% more homes to like the market, the overall market should be increased. And, and the, what this article doesn't talk about was the fact that when the interest rates went up, when they skyrocketed last year, Mm. a lot of buyers, a lot of buyers put the brakes on, they press the pause button. Right. Yeah. And, but the thing is, is those buyers still want to buy. Yes. They so, do. so now we turn the corner of 2024, those buyers are like, you know what? The, the panic of, you know, the interest rates, are, oh, what if they go up to 10% and oh, maybe they're going to drop down again. And, and it's like, they just keep hovering. I mean, this, this week they went up, right. Yeah, well, the end of last week they went up and uh, I checked today they're at seven, Earlier today, 7.3 is what Mortgage Bankers Association has for 30 year fixed. But because um, they were hovering at like right around 6.9, 6.8 for a while and 6.9. 6.5 for a minute. Yep. Yeah, 6.5 okay. for like literally 60 seconds. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, but, but the those buyers are like, it's like feeding a pack of wolves. Yeah. So now the 16% extra of inventory comes in and it's like, now oh. you see it, now you don't. Because oh. all those buyers just kind of are just swarming, and that's why we're still seeing all that, you know, um, all that 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 uh, high, you know, multiple offers and stuff like that, and you know, and and whatnot. It's uh, well, let's talk about that part. I mean, I just want to add and interject in there, just in terms of multiple offers. Um, folks are, I think, half of the belief is that no, that's not happening anymore. We're in a market where you know it's a uh, buyer's market, right? That's kind of a misconception too, when you don't understand the numbers and you don't understand what, what's happening in an area in terms of inventory. Yeah, basically every uh, crash bro on YouTube. Yeah, well, <laughs> I can say it. I'm like, you know what? You find I, I read somewhere along the lines. It's like you will, you'll see what you're looking for. Yeah, it's if true. If you're looking for confirmation that the market is crashing, you'll find it. One all over the place. Just yeah, like yeah, if yeah. you're about to look, if you're trying to buy a red car, you're going to like, oh my God, I didn't know there was so many red cars all over the place. It's true. Um, and uh, so there's actually, it's, it's going to come to me later. There's actually a part of your brain um, that actually, oh, yes. uh, that, that activates that and uh, it'll, it'll, it'll come to me, but something um, receptor, what is it? Uh, something receptor or the law of reciprocity, something. Y something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, and you know what? Uh, usually can, it's right off the tip of my tongue, but today, you know, yeah, it, it, it's tough getting older I'm like, oh, older <laughs> you're not at all <laughs> no but uh but it's it's you know you find what you're looking for so if, <laughs> if of course if you want to look if you're like you know crash you know um sensitive or or, or whatnot or you're negative on the market or you're frustrated yeah. which who is, you know who isn't then that's what you're gonna see but the reality is is a lot of that stuff the data has been skewed yes and and like when i'm looking at you know, I'm, I'm, I'm active, an active real estate agent. You're an active real estate agent. Yeah. I can look at my inventory. I can oh, see yeah. black and white. There are 58 homes on the market compared to last year. Right now, our numbers are actually neck and neck. It feels different. Mm -hmm. You know, it yes. feels different, but it doesn't, it, there's not a ton of difference. I think it's just because there was such a, there was a long gap from when the market, the you know buyers took a took a pause button, but yeah. press the pause button. But I mean, we see the numbers, and I now know. that's not a representation of the entire country, right? But, but we talk to other agents and the other agents that are in the trenches every day, and 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 you could say, oh, there's seven hundred thousand homes on the market. You could you can twist that all which way sideways, but the number is the number, right? Like it's not made up. But anyways. It's just, I just find it, uh, find it very interesting in that sense of like, even when I'm talking to buyers themselves, I remind them, listen, if, especially if you're looking in areas that have a tendency to go a little bit quicker, you could possibly still be in multiple offers. That's just a reality of where we are because there's not much inventory. Are you, are you, are you so I'm going to ask you this only because hot Austin is such a hot button right now of mm -hmm. conversation because it you is. get, now I'm, I'm on what these coasts. And so I don't, I'm not in your area to know, like, the, again, the truth. Right. So what I read is that Austin was, they were the king of the hill. 
last year. And now they're like, oh, Austin's in trouble. Austin's in trouble. And I'm like, okay, so again, what's the, you know, the real deal? Well, you're the real deal. So, yeah. so from your perspective, you're in the trenches. So are you, you know, is Austin uh, struggling as much as we hearing on, on the news? Like, you know, in terms of all these crazy, the builders pulling out, pull, you know, bo- you know, pulling back and all the things yeah. like, are, are you seeing a lot of that? For, for I, in IRL, as the kids say. In real oh, good. Here's what, here's what I'm personally seeing. One is, is I always go back to, to the data, right? And our data says just in um, last month, for example, we're still in Austin MSA is still about four months of inventory. So that tells me right away. Four months. That's, we still don't have enough. We still don't have okay. enough inventory. Yeah. So that lets I would say it's know. probably less than that. You would think probably like, probably a lot less yeah. than well, if months. you go to uh, different areas, I'm just thinking about our whole, if you look at the okay. Austin, the whole and the surrounding area, right? Yep. Okay. So I think it said we were, let me look real quick. So, so I can tell you. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. So yeah, we're at about 3.8, right? Almost four more months worth of inventory for just last month. Okay. So if you just look at that alone, you know, that doesn't tell me we've crashed anywhere, right? It's kind of weird to say, okay, how, how can we have cra- crashed the market? We don't have enough inventory for the buyers that are out in the marketplace. To me, it just doesn't align. So what I am seeing is people are still interested. I mentioned before that, you know, folks are sitting on the sidelines and that's greatly depicted upon or based on interest rates. Like that's what they're hundred and ten mean that they're not ready to buy. It doesn't mean we're crashing and burning and that nobody's interested in the market. That's not true. Right. I've got even investors who, you know, I, I had another article that I read uh, recently, just as I was preparing for a video I was doing, it said that Austin was one of the markets that was going to decline by at least 12%, right? So if I'm an investor, what do I hear? And I get these calls. Oh, oh, a market's getting ready to go down. Well, guess yes. what? Floods us in with more buyers, the investor trying to get into our market. So yeah, I... I feel 50-50 on what folks are saying about it. I think some of it is sensationalized. Yep. Some of it has some valid points to it. Oh, well, come on. Now, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me that what we say in the news (laughs) is like not 100% accurate? (laughs) Shut the front door. Really? Know, right? Are you serious? Like, it's not actually like the way it actually is? Like You would think they'd tell you the truth. (laughs) What is this world coming to? What is this world coming to? I can't even. But to your point. This is why it's good to talk to people who are in the market. That's well, this so is why important. we do. The, this is why I want to do these yeah. live streams, right? Because, you know, as my channel, I put right on my channel, no BS. Like I don't, I, you know, buy a house from me. Don't buy a house from me. I don't care. I just want to get the real information from the people that are doing the work yeah. out to the public. So because, I, I mean, the data, the data centers, the research centers, okay, like that's where we need, that's where we need to go. That's where we should go. It's what gets lost in the middle of, uh, you know, in, in lost in translation. The interpretation. Like, wasn't that a movie? That information. Isn't that a movie lost in translation? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it? So. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, it. This article goes back to say, it says, uh, um, we think that reports of a wave of new real New resale supply coming onto the market are overblown. I totally agree with that. I don't mm-hmm. think all the the news about all oh, there's a flood of inventory coming from the boomers. There's a flood of inventory. I'm actually doing a video myself my, right now about um, the supposed flood of foreclosures, um, mm-hmm. which is all over the you know talk of the town. All these foreclosures are coming and everything else. No, like, yes, some will always come, but it's not a flood. Uh, it yeah. says, while the number of homes being listed for sale has increased compared to last year, it is still low by historical standards. As mortgage rate lock-in continues to curb the number of homes put on the sale. And I did a, a live stream on this, uh, I think la- last, two weeks ago, I did a live stream on lock- the lock-in effect where people yeah. are just like, they're, they're not moving because A, they don't want to lose their rate or B, they can't lose their rate because right. they can't afford, they can't afford to move. I gotta, I gotta like get rid of this ad. This thing's driving me crazy. Oh. Before we go. <laughs> um, my ADHD is like, I want to look at it yeah. so bad. Yeah. What is that X? What is it? What is <laughs> Darn ads. Um, but that's true. It's you know what I'm saying. Like it's it's. It, I think that's and I and, and there's no answer to that. I think eventually when it comes to the lock-in rate, people 
or the lock-in effect, eventually people will have to just cut bait, right? They they're they're, they're going to have to say, you know what? I have clients right now that I'm working with that are in that exact case. I talked to one that contacted me off my, my channel on Friday and they have a great, they refinanced like everybody else did. Okay. Yeah. During the pandy and got a great late, great rate, but they're like, you know what? Our personal needs like are overpowering the mm. rate and we're just going to, we need to bite the bullet and we need to relocate because of X, Y, Z reasons are way more important than holding on to that rate. Right. And they're in a position where they can do that, you know, so, cause they have equity, so they right. can, can, you know, can make that move. But, uh, but a lot of people, you know, won't be able to, if they don't no. have, you know, have the equity or they don't have the ability. Um, well, and then to add to that, you know, the lock-in effect, it's, you know, I was talking to a client as well, and we were talking about their rate and whether or not they wanted to move up, right? Mm -hmm. You have an interest rate of two, three, and you are going into, what'd you say the national average is right now? Seven, three? Seven, three. As of this, as of earlier today, it was 7.3. At some point, it's it's not a good financial decision for some. And so when they Correct. talk about it being, you know, this overdrawn uh, market, that there's going to be so many coming in, it's a personal decision. And you can't calculate people's personal decisions as to when they would want to make that move and make that decision to move from 100% interest rate. So I don't know how they're calculating that number. Oh, um, they're not. Are you kidding? I know. Some of the things, if I, could, if I could show you this article that I... I, I maybe we'll get to it at the end. So if you're watching this video, if you're watching this live stream, stay to the end. Watch to the end. Little, but bonus. No, so I, I, this article that just like, I'm like, I can't believe that they actually printed the, what they did. But oh gosh. I, it's kind of crazy. It's just, I don't know. People are just, yeah. Anyhow, yes, um, <laughs> the article goes on to say, if anything, the housing market looks even tighter than it was a year ago. While inventory remains in short supply, the demand has grown hotter, like we were just mm -hmm. talking about, with houses on the market selling three times faster on average than last year. That is that back supply of buyers. Those it are is. those buyers that hit the pause button and now they're coming in and they're coming in like a like a herd because yes. and, and that's why it's they're selling for fast. That's why those homes are selling for faster because we have it, we have increased. It's hard to believe, but we actually have increased demand. It's um, true. Well, and this, that's a strategy. It's it's strategy that I actually coach my clients in, which is right now, even though we've got all these buyers in the marketplace, they're slow to make a move. Mm -hmm. But if you are the ones that are willing to take the risk. So the strategy is if you're willing to take the risk, you know that you can do things later on in terms of refinance and all of these other things. You actually have more at your disposal at hand in terms of inventory. Because folks are like, hmm, humming and hooing as to whether or not it's going to fit within their budget. Should they make the decision? Well, right now, if you make that decision, boom, you'll have the house that you love rather than fighting so many incoming buyers that are just now realizing, oh my gosh, I don't know if rates are going to go down anytime soon. Right? Well, and, and what's going to happen is, is that, you know, I was actually literally just reading an article before we jumped on um, about uh, uh, the Fed you know, had released a statement earlier today and, and said that they are committed, like the rates are going to be, if, if, in, depending on inflation, right? If inflation is still raise, is, is raging. Right. There's, there's nothing, there's nothing. Yeah. I mean, the, the rates are not coming down. Right. But if all of a sudden uh, inflation starts to tam you know, temper down, tamp tamper, tamper down, yeah. uh, tamper, like, you know, that big temper. Tamper. Heavy thing to pat like in your gardens. Or <laughs> uh, anyways, I digress. Um, but if the if inflation st it starts going the other way, we will absolutely see, you know, an adjustment in the rates, which when that happens, not if, but when that happens, those floodgates are going to open because those buyers that are the ones that are sitting on the sidelines, like you said. Yeah. That are like, I nope, nope, nope. Either I can't or I won't. Nope, nope, nope. As soon as those rates go down to, I think it's going to be around six yeah, percent. I think when it hits the, some people say five, point. five and a half. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be like six, six is about right. I you know, and once they get down to six, I think we're it's going to be, you know, you, you think the demand's high now. I know. Just wait. But the thing is, is it's going to be like a twofold because you know, when that happens. Potentially, you can see a lot of these lock-in client, lock-in buyers, home buy, homeowners, um, open up. 
So it's like, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be like, oh my gosh, wait a, way, a wave of buyers it's that fun. are flooding the market for the same amount of inventory. No, there's going to be more inventory, but it's still going to be like blood in the water. So it'll, it'll be, be like, yeah, it'll be locked up. Well, I imagine those sellers, you know, those ones that were on the fence or even I've had this buyer regret. I'm sure you've talked about it. That's something I'm going to be talking about too. Is yep. buyer regret here. We were in this frenzy and folks really didn't buy the house that they truly love, but they had to buy something, right? It's yep. those. Um, those are going to be the individuals that are going to end up listing to buy because 6% is more palatable, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, it goes hand in hand because, you know, it's like what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Because if, if a buy a homeowner says, I can't afford it, I can't afford to lose my rate because my my the new rate will go up. My overall housing payment, I can't afford based on my household budget. Yeah. Well, the reason why they can't afford it in the household budget is because, you know, inflation is raging. Well, when it stops costing like 45 freaking dollars for a, a dozen eggs, yeah. I don't mean to be crude, but like, yeah. you know, when, it's, when, when those grocery prices come down, the gas prices come down, right? Then all of a sudden their budget's going to be like, yes. and then you combine the lower rate and it's going to be like, okay, yes, we man. can make this work. Let's go. For right? sure. It, 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 you know, we can make it, make it, uh, make it work. So it'll be um, interesting. Let's see if there's anything else in this article. Not really. Um, <laughs> that's about, that's about it on the, on this article. There was, uh, um, I pulled this article up on Forbes. Was it this one? Um, oh, I wanted to bring this one up actually. Let's see it. This is one of the reasons why I like, I got, uh, inspired for, um, the eighties music intro. Okay. Let's see. Home builders resurrect eighties era playbook in response to housing market affordability pressures. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I was like, let's get with, I was actually looking for like, I was in like, into like, uh, can I get my trapper keeper? You remember yeah, that? dude, I had a trapper keeper <laughs> and Lisa Frank. 100%, 100% with my, uh, oh, the cure and the police and all the things. But anyways, all those good bands, all the good bands. Um, but so what this article basically says is that, uh, it says, well, some home builders, and you're probably seeing a lot of this, you, you know, down your way in Texas, yeah. is a lot more new construction than up my way. But uh, it says, um, while some home builders are, have responded to spiked mortgage rates, by doing um, straightforward price reductions or cash incentives, which we've seen. The preferred affordability adjustment to this cycle among many prominent builders is offering mortgage rate, mortgage rate buy-downs, which I want to, I want to, I want to kind of dive into that, like what that yeah. is and, and whatnot. Uh, it says, look no further than Lenar. Do you have Lenar? Lenar, we do. Okay. Is a number ranked number 119 on the Fortune 500, which is presently promoting an a an FHA buy down uh, program featuring a rate of 3.75% in year one in Colorado. And then after that, 4.75 for the balance of the term. Sounds good. But again, I want to, I want to dissect that. Um, this is, of course, these buy downs are hardly a new concept. It's an echo of the past. In the early eighties, home builders faced affordability strains much like today. And the mm. builders turned to mortgage rates buy downs then as they do now in 2024. Earlier this week, Ryan Lundquist, an appraiser in Sacramento, tweeted a home builder ad that ran in the Sacramento Bee on August 19, 1980. The builder was advertising a 9.75% mortgage rate at the time when the 30-year fixed was 12.95. Wow. So this is the ad. Like nine and three quarters. Isn't that like a Harry wow. Potter thing? Isn't that like a Harry Potter thing? Nine and three quarters. Look at that. This one here. Okay. <laughs> but that's crazy, right? That's, That's crazy. crazy. But so I want to kind of talk about that whole strategy. Uh, my first question to you is, um, are you seeing that down your way? Are you seeing the buy downs, the builder, crazy packages, uh, crazy things? Are you seeing any of that man. stuff? I do. I actually do a lot of new construction. I started this business in new construction. Um, and so I am seeing everyone, every builder, they're offering, I always tell people, offering something. And a lot of that has to do with the buy down. Um, now, most people don't realize this about a buy down. When you do see that with a Lennar or let's see a Highland Home or let's let's use DR Horton because that's that's a national home builder, right? Yep. 
those uh, buy downs, they purchase them up front, right? And they yep. only have a certain amount. So if you're going to use that, you've got to look for those builders uh, and lock one down pretty quickly because they may only have a certain amount that they can give away. But it's a great strategy. Oh, yes. I get you. Which yes. makes sense because it costs them. It costs them. Uh, it costs them money, right? Right. Um, so, like for example, a two one buy down here. Most recently, I was helping a client that was about fifteen thousand wow. to do that buy down. Wow. Um, so yes, it's going to cost the builders, but it's a great strategy if you're looking to get into the market. Um, for sure. And you don't want to fight right on the resale market. And that way you can lock something in just like this, like Lennar, we have the same promotional going on actually uh, in our area where you can get in that first year for, you know, 3%. Yep. And then yep. also lock in at a much lower rate, right. Yep. Um, on the back end of that, of, which is like 4.75%, I think you, you said. So. Which sounds super enticing, but I know there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of misinformation. Uh, first off, Dave Matney. Hello, hello. He's uh, he's a regular on this live stream. Thanks for joining us, Dave. Yeah. It's always good to see you, for sure. Thanks for the support. Steph, thanks for stopping by. Uh, Dave always asks good questions. So um, okay. the thing I wanted to kind of dive into is, you know, in, in, to educate those watching is, you know, what the what a buy down is. And maybe, maybe, you know, those watching already know, but to kind of get into the, because it, it sounds super enticing, right? Um, and it's like these these low rates, like the 3.75 and the four and a quarter, like that sounds really great. But the thing that you need to know is it's not for the entire life of the loan. So what is a buy down? Buy down is a mortgage financial financing technique in which the buyer attempts to lower, to obtain a lower interest rate, at least for the first few years of the mortgage or possibly its entire life. So here's the thing. Uh, it says a uh, two one buy down, for example, is a specific type of mortgage, which buy uh, a mortgage buy down that allows a home buyer to save on the interest rate for the first two years alone. So the way that buy downs work is, is, you know, the two one would be uh, two points, two interest points for the first or, or for the first year, maybe you know, two in two for the, it's a rate for the first year. It's a rate for the second year. And then it's locked in three through 30. Mm -hmm. It's a 30 year loan, right? Um, that can be the, the fine print in that is it can be dangerous, right? Because you could say, okay, well, it's going to be, you know, 30. And I saw this, this during the, the financial collapse in 2008, adjustable rate mortgages buy downs were all the rage, right? Yeah. And people didn't read the fine print and they were like, oh, I can buy this down a whole rate. I can write it, buy it down two points. You know, and, and then it's going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to save myself hundreds and hundreds of dollars and all the things. Well, what they didn't realize is that on the third year, it adjusted to the current rate and the, and plus it's usually it's current rate plus X plus a point, yeah, 1.2 points, whatever. And the current, the rates went crazy. So their adjusted locked in 30 rate, 30 year rate was completely unaffordable. Yeah. I can see that completely unaffordable. And then the, and that's a lot of, that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we saw a lot of homeowners go into foreclosure because they yeah. were like, I just can't. And then everything started to implode and people losing jobs and, 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 you know, the whole nine yards. And it was just, it was, it was just, it was, a, it was a mess. But you know, the, the big thing that I would say um, with those buy downs is you got to read the fine print um, mm -hmm. and buying down the rate versus, um, a discount point is yep. entirely different. Like a discount point is actually like if you're buying down a, a one point discounted, that's year one to 30 Yes, at that discount, but it's way more expensive. It is. So the other thing to add to that as a warning, it can be great, not just the fine print, but also how much is it going to cost and is it going to cost you? Right. There's extra additional fees. So I always tell people you need to compare what they're offering you. What's going on? <laughs> um, you need to compare what they're offering you with a lender that you trust, right? Yep. To know which yep. is going to be the best deal over the next, you know, 15, whatever you choose, 15 to 30 years. Correct. Correct. And, and with those builders, a lot of those builders, uh, they're like, Hey, you know, we're going to, we're offering these buy downs. You have to use the lender, right? Yep. Typically is that usually what you're saying? Like you have to use True. the lender that we have the agreement. Cause here's the thing they're making, I don't want to say backdoor deals, but they're get, because I mean, they're doing it in bulk or whatnot. They're getting these special rates. It's like if you go to your your local lender, 
they may not be able to get that same two one three one three two one buy down at the same rate, which doesn't make it financially feasible for them. No. So it's so now you have to go with a lender that you don't know, that you have no familiarity with, that you don't and because you don't know them, how do you know that you can trust them? Yeah. So now you have to be super it's not bad, but you have to be very vigilant you to do. read all the fine print. Right? You got to know what question. that rate's going to be after after that buy down expires. You got to know it's true. what that rate's going to be. It's so true. And again, making sure you compare. You don't necessarily have to go with the builder's lender. It may benefit you in the short run, but maybe you need it to benefit you over the 30 year period. So that's going to be really important to do for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, you bring up a good point because it's like you, you could go to your local bank, your local lender and get... A, a, a maybe a higher rate out of, the, out of the gate, but over the course of the 30 years, maybe they're going to save you uh, in, in different ways. It's true. You know, I mean, because you don't know what the added, um, that's why I always tell my my buyers to look, you know, when they're rate shopping, you got to look at the uh, the APR. Yes. Because the APR is the interest rate plus what the actual costs are. Yeah. Well, maybe hidden costs associated with that loan that you don't know until you get that truth and lending statement. And then it's like, holy cow, this rate here sounds really good. But then when you look at the APR with both, the, when you look at the close, you know, both of them combined, this rate here that, that looks higher is actually, the big picture is actually lower. Yeah. Actually to save you more money, you know, in the, in the, in the long run. So, but I'm seeing, um, you know, I think we're going to see more, of this, because I don't think buy down from the builders. Yeah, well, and not oh, only yeah. the builders, but I think from from home sellers. I mean, you know, I think that as the tide turns, as we get more bot sellers, um, for, you know, as, as we get more sellers in the market, right? As, as the as the market starts to loosen up a little bit, right? Right, we're going to have more sellers come in the market, which means as we get more inventory. I mean, and in certain markets, that's already happening. Oh yeah, right down in Florida. They're having a heck of a time, okay. right? Things that the tide has changed big time down there, right? Interesting stuff down there. It really is. I mean, the, the client that I talked to, uh, I talked to a client last week that's moving up here from Florida and and uh, they have like, you know, four houses in their neighborhood that are on the market, that are on the market. Just sitting. The, and and maybe it's, you know, and it's all relative. Like you it, you could have a house that's on the market for two weeks and you're like, oh my gosh, it's been on the market forever. Well, forever compared to 24 hours, right. which is what we've kind of become accustomed to. It's true. Right? Go but ahead. it's definitely different depending on where you are in the country. It's, it you know, you might see more of these types of incentives. And from a seller's perspective, this may not be a bad deal to be like, hey, you know, you know, I would I say- Maybe not say to a, not, not put it in a, um, advertisement that you're going to pay for a buy down, or you could say the seller will give a credit to the buyer for yeah. X amount of dollars that can be used to buy down. This is rent. a good gym. This is a good gym because sellers do need to be competitive. So if we're going to compare both right reselling and new construction, especially in my area, well, home, home sellers, resell sellers are competing against new construction. So you're right. going to need something in your marketing strategy to say, okay, you need flexibility here because we're going to be in competition with some of these new construction um, home builders and the buyers are going to be enticed and know and understand what type of incentives can be offered. So be ready in your mind to know that, hey, there's something we may want to offer the buyers to bring them in um, to the deal, especially with rates being the way that they are. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, I think that, you know, and, 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 and it's not necessarily like it's a mind sh mindset shift from a seller's perspective that you're like, well, the market is still good. You know, mm -hmm. why should I give them any money? Right. Well, the reality of it is, is it's, it's, you know, the, the, the data, again, the data doesn't lie. I, I'm like a broken record when I, when my clients get sick and tired of hearing me that because right. hearing that from me, because I'm like, well, I like that though. This is the data doesn't lie. Like this is not an right. opinion. This is just the data. Like now we can interpret the data many different ways, but the data itself, you know, doesn't, uh, doesn't lie. And the data historically, historically, the more offers you get, the faster you get them. Yeah. In other words, you get, you know, a, a, a buy a seller that gets, 10 or 15 offers within the first week is going to, oh, you know, historically 
they will net more money than three weeks down the line, four weeks down the line, or even an, even a seller that has, you know, 10 offers versus five offers historically. The more offers you have, the more buyer interest, the what better chances you have of raising that sale price. Oh, so yeah. even like a strategy could be, you know, enticing a buyer to come to get in the door with these buy downs very well could bring in buyers that may not otherwise make an offer. It's true. Uh, which will drive because I mean, I've seen situations where you've had multiple buyers competing for if I'm on the listing side and multiple buyers come to the table and you have, you know, buyer number one who, you know, puts a good, good offer together, but maybe they're like riding the line with what they can afford. And that's that, you know, it is what it is. You put right. the buy down, they're still like at that cap. Well, the way that we negotiate buyers, like the, you know, from a, from a listing perspective, you would think, I think that there's a misconception that the general public thinks that, you know, there's like conversations like, oh, this buyer is doing this. So I'm going to do that. And they're like, you, you know, like a bidding war. Yeah. Like the real that doesn't, it's not an auction. Like nobody knows what the other offer is. It's always blind. And the reason behind that, I mean, you could say like, Angie, I'm going to, you know, this buyer has offered, you know, 300,000. Right. Does your buyer want to go 305? That, okay. That's a valid question. That's a hundred percent valid question. But if I go to you and say, Angie, I know your, you know, your offer, I know your offer is 300. There are multiple offers. That's correct. How, how many, how much are those other, I don't, I, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. I'm not, mm -hmm. a, uh, you know, I'm not, a, um, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, able to tell you. Right. To tell, you know, what those offers are. Now your buyer is sitting there going, I don't, we don't know what those other offers. So we're going to make a much higher offer because we're guessing that maybe those other offers, that's how the price goes up. So now yeah. you have this buy down and this is a, you know, Ooh, it's going to bring in more people. And you have this buyer comes in, they're marginal, they make a good offer. And then the second buyer comes in and they have the means. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know what? There are multiple offers. There are a ton of people interested. I have been waiting on the sidelines for six months. Yeah. I'm done waiting. I'm offering up here. Yeah. Because you attracted more people into the, into the, you know, into the process. I think it's so, great. And that way it's a, it's a good strategy for sellers for, for sure. And honestly, that's really kind of ha what happened before, right? When we were in this hot market. Yep. Um, and, and not only that, the interest rates were lower, but, but that's the premises of that market, which is, okay, sellers were offer, are, are expecting to um, offer at a certain amount. Some of them were actually offering incentives during that time too, believe it or not. Um, but you're absolutely right. It draws those buyers in. You want the most eyeballs on a property if you're a seller, right? You need most, to yep, in, absolutely. And that house touring, that house staying as long as possible so that you know their interest. And then at the end of the day, you got to choose, okay, how badly do I want this house? Do I, you know, want this house? Can I see myself here living here for the long term? Is it worth it to me to go up? Right. No, and 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 you know, when I when a buyer asks me, you know, what should, you know, I mean, gosh, I mean, I, I love this house. What, what should I offer? My response is always, what is the number that you will be comfortable with That's that it. you will have no regrets on? If That's you, it. if you, if someone were to bid a hundred dollars more than that offer, then you're okay with letting it go because you weren't willing to pay a hundred dollars more. You're not, you're, you're saying, you know what that property is? It's because it's all values all in what the buyer's willing to pay. Yeah. Sellers don't control the value. Yep. They don't, there's no, there's no control there. Right. So, you know, a buyer comes in and, and, and that's why we get some of these offers. They're like, you know, people say, oh, they've overpaid. They've overpaid. I'm like, says you, because <laughs> the property wasn't worth it to you. Right. To that buyer who wanted that house for their own personal reasons. That's correct. They want the location, the family needs, the financial needs, whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. like. They didn't overpay. They're they're they if as long as they can afford it. Now buying it and not being able to afford it is a totally different thing, right? That's totally like, different. That's, that's a totally a different conversation. It's a buyer conversation. Yeah, hundred no, percent. But if like if my budget is five hundred, and I look at a four seventy a four fifty list house, and I offer four seventy five, yep. Am I crazy for paying twenty five? Not if it's worth it to me. 
It's got to be worth it to you. Not if it's like, for whatever reason, for me personally, mm-hmm. now it's not a matter of, oh my gosh, they overpaid. They, they, they can't afford it. It's like, no, you didn't. That's, I can afford it, Yeah, but it's just, it's just worth it to me. So it's, it's, it's all relative. Dave asked a question. Oh yeah. Let's see here. Uh, he says, do you think as rates, as rates increase, the market only tightens more, fewer existing sellers. I think that, you know, I think that those sellers that are sitting on the sidelines, those ones that are either, um, the locked in rate sellers, um, the ones that are, that are not, that are, are kind of sitting tight for that reason. Uh, they're obviously, there's no motivation to move. Right. However, um, people are still going to sell mm-hmm. if the, you know, death, divorce, yeah, relocation, yeah. Yeah. babies, all the things like there's always a reason a parent moving in, regardless of what the rates are, people are going to want to move. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, well, I think it'll tighten even more. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know that <laughs> I'll get it tighten even more. Like when you're taking blood from a stone, <laughs> you're like, I think I can get into these pants from the eighties. <laughs> oh. Sign me up for that. <laughs> oh my God. So I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, I don't know if they can get, I mean, will it tighten even more? I mean, anything's possible, but I mean, over the last, uh, you know, over the last, um, geez, I saw the markets, I saw, I saw the market shifting was, uh, you know, September. So it was gosh, six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't see it any being any tighter than, I mean, it was snoozeville, you know, I mean, people are still buying and selling, but. I mean, I could look at on a normal, I'd look at Plymouth and be listing different listings coming on market and under a contract. I was looking at all of Plymouth County. Wow. In January. I'm just like, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. And it really just depends on, again, those Fed, the Federal rallies is what I call them. the Federal rallies. <laughs> the Federal rallies. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's going to depend on where we are, you know, in terms of inflation. I, my thought process is just so y'all know, just a little side note of how my, how I'm predicting these things, not just based on what's being said. Wait, wait, let me guess. You have a crystal ball. I have a crystal ball. Y'all ready? I knew it. I knew it. I just had a feeling. You. This only applies to the election season though. I will tell you. Yeah. Um, You know what? That's a whole nother ball of wax that, you know, it's going to affect everything. But anyways, go ahead. My hope was that just like in years past that we've seen rates fall right during this season um, because folks want to look great. <laughs> Politicians want to look great. They want the 100%. Look great, right? Of course they and do. Of course they do. They do all these things. So I was hoping that that would come into play a lot sooner, but yet rates are still. Well, it's because of it's because of that inflation. Yeah, it's because the inflation, the jobs market is is not yeah. doing poorly. <laughs> like it, you know, everything is just like it. It's like a, a a freight train. With you know, everything just keeps keeps. There's like no, there's no reason for them. I know. To do to to lower the rate. You Gosh. know, I mean, as the more people, the more people pony up the money. If every American stops spending. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everybody. Just stop spending. Don't spend. Oh, Just don't spend anything. So then us. we'll see the rates come down. Because then you know, because now the businesses can't, they can't can't keep the doors open, right? Yeah. Because you're not buying this, their stuff. But I mean, like, I don't know about you, but those Amazon trucks, Const- every day in my neighborhood, Const- every day. Hey, they go near and far. They'll go way up a hill, way down in the valley. And I don't see sure. any difference. Yeah. And I mean, maybe there was an uptick in. At, Christmas. But yeah. besides that, like I'm not marge, like literally the trucks are, I mean, half the time they're stopping at my house, but <laughs> Stop uh, heading to your house. I mean, the thing is, is I, 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 I shop, I'm trying to, I'm a consumer. I'm trying to get the best prices on everything. So I, I do, I hate grocery stores. I absolutely just can't. That's like the biggest waste of my time. I absolutely despise going to the grocery store. And I, when, when it, it, it honest to God, Angie, when the pandemic yeah. was like, it was like, Oh, I don't have to leave my house to go grocery shopping. It's like all these delivery options. I'm like, you have to go. Yes. In. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Walmart, 
Walmart uh, has a has a program and you get delivered to my house yeah. for free. Sign me up. Oh, wait, I have to spend at least thirty five dollars, which is like eggs and bread, and know, like, eggs. literally. Right. And so so like I but I'll go between Walmart and and, and Amazon. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, Amazon's got my the, the tea that I drink and it, it's a little cheaper. Mm. So I'm going to buy it there. And they had, what else did I just get to? Uh, yesterday I got tea and uh, I was like, vitamins. It's like, yes. cheaper. I was just bought on, for, I mean, it was only by like a, a dollar or something, but who cares? So yeah. I bought on Amazon because I'm not paying yeah. for delivery. So, so. Um, we keep spending. I mean, and think about this too. I just uh, crossed my mind. I remember, um, let's, let's see, probably last summer, we started to see a shift. I mean, we saw things starting to change. Um, but people are spending on vacations now. Remember, we were locked down. Well, so, that's true. That You bring up a great point. point. We're going yeah. places now. We're buying the things. We're doing the things. Um, so I could see why we're still at where we are. And the, those rates are just not going to come down at the moment. I was, um, I was in New York City last year. Um, my daughter was in a, a national acapella competition. That's really cool. Yeah, which was so cool. It was like, I mean, they were like the finalists and all the things. They were like, they were like the top eight, and they were the only fe all female group. Wow. I'm totally bragging on here. That's I, awesome. I mean, they were amazing. But like, I'm walking down New York City, and it was uh, rainy. I'm like, this is great. We finally get to, you know, we're spending time in New York City. It was pouring rain. There were, it was flipping like we went to the M and M store. Yeah. It was packed and this was like in a like march or something yeah it was Tell packed me, people, ready to and, go. And, and let me tell you something you want to talk about the biggest sham what is it i come home with this 42 pound bag of m&ms i had yeah. to like take a, an equity loan on my house to buy yeah. these m&ms and i'm like i'm eating them and i'm like i'm gonna enjoy every there single one of these things because they cost me my right. left arm and what? and my you know i was like this is just this is, but you're in the store and you're like, oh, yes. And your wallet is screaming, help, let me out. And I'm just like, shut up, <laughs> shut up. This is fun. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so I actually, um, uh, Forbes published an article okay, about uh, their predictions for the, the coming year and, uh, what, what they think is going to happen. So apparently they have a crystal ball, but we'll see. Let's see. Um, we always do these guys. All right. So it says uh, uh, elevated mortgage rates out of reach, home prices and record low housing stocks are the perennial weeds. Isn't that nice? Springtime. That, <laughs> that experts say hopefully home buyers can expect to contend with this spring and beyond. The housing market is likely to continue to face dual affordability constraints of high home prices and elevated interest rates in 2024. Yeah. Hotter than expected inflation data and strong payroll numbers. We're just talking about that. Yep. Are likely to approve to apply more upward pressure on mortgage rates this year uh, than we previously forecast. It says mm. despite ongoing uh, affordability hurdles, Fannie Mae forecasts an increase in home sales transactions compared to last year. Um, let's see. It says. Uh, the U.S. Home, prices, uh, home price declined in January for the third consecutive month due to high borrowing costs, according to, to the S&P Core Logic, which they are now saying that that in March was up 4%. Yeah. Um, but home prices year over year jumped 6%, the fastest annual rate since 2022. Um, it says if the 2021 housing market was hot, then the 2023 market was Probably too cold, but 2024 won't be there just right. You see the you, what they did, the three little yeah, bears there? You see what they did there? Come too on, hot, right. too cold, just right. <laughs> just Come right. On. You get you get littles at home, you know, you know. Um, it says, well, the housing market, let's see here. Yeah, the housing market finally recover in 2024. Uh, it says, for the best possible outcome, we first need to see inventories of homes for sale turn considerably higher. Uh, mm -hmm. It says this inventory in turn will uh, ease the upward pressure on home prices, leveling them off and perhaps helping them settle back somewhat from peak to near peak levels. Um, let's see. It says he did do a, uh, he says, here we go. He says adds, he adds that mortgage rates are turning to a more normal upper 4% to low 5%. 
the Nash, the 50 year average, Angie, is seven and a half percent. I don't know. I don't think normal is four to five. If we, if we get to four to five, we're going to see habits like bonkers. We saw a couple of years ago. It's going to be wild. No, no. I don't, I so, don't think I, and actually he says down the bottom, he says, we're definitely looking forward to a better housing market in 2024 as interest rates settle, settle around 6% or even lower. I still say 6, 6% with you for sure. hundred percent. And mm -hmm. I think that that's, I think four to 5%. I mean, the only way we'd see four to 5%, right. It's definitely not going to be this year. No. For sure. Right. There's no way. Um, I think that, the you know four months. Yeah. No, maybe like you know, could they go if in order for them to get to that point, right? We would have to have that we'd have to have inv inflation come down. Mm -hmm. We'd have to have inventory. more inventory. We'd have to have, you know, there's just so many elements to get it to that point. It's almost like we'd have to get into a recession. Yeah. In order for that rate to come down that low. They're not gonna do that. They're not gonna let us get into I don't something. think it's gonna happen. I think it's just it's um, like all, it's so different than the 20, the 2008, um, right, you know, financial collapse. Yeah. It's completely different. We had so many different things going on there, um, you know, in terms of what was happening in the financial sector and what was happening with policy and mm -hmm. what was happening with the buy downs and people getting into trouble that way. And, you know, then the rates adjusting and so many bad decisions. And then the foreclosures, you know, flooded the market. Like it's totally, it's totally different. And then, and thankfully I think that the fed is, is, um, I, 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 I can't believe I'm saying this, but they're maybe learning a little bit from their mistakes. Well, a little bit, yeah, a, little oh, bit. A, little, a little bit, just a little bit. Well, and the other part is, is you were talking about 2008 is that, you know, they were giving people loans that shouldn't have had loans to begin with, right? Folks that didn't have any money. 100%. Uh, and the difference here, one of the things I have to tell folks, the difference here is that folks actually do have a bank of money. It's They have more money than they had before, which is why we're flooded. We've flooded the market with money. We can go on vacation. We can do the things. So there's more there because we've had to save. I think those, those, those parts of COVID where we couldn't do anything, there was nothing for yep. people to really spend on. So- I think they have more money in the bank this time around. I think that we are more prepared, although they're hearing opposing thoughts from the news and other yep. sources like the bros. Um, but I feel like we're more savvy. Well, the that's the, I mean, savvy is the key word millennial for millennial. millennials. Like 100. millennials get such a bad rap. And the reality of it is, is they are the most savvy generation they are. In, in, in multiple generations. Way more yeah. savvy than... Gen X, my generation. Yeah. We were spending money. We we're like, yeah, sure, let's go. You know, we're to, ah, that'll come. And, you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry yeah. about it. You know, but, uh, you know, and, and getting back to like the beginning about the fact that there's a difference between what's in the news. Oh, yeah. And what we're seeing and, and, and to actually experience it firsthand. And, and I can't speak for every single county in the country. Right. I can't. What I can tell you is that I've been doing this for 20, gosh, almost 28 years. And I have not seen so much money coming mm -hmm. from buyers in my career. Like, yeah. you know, first time home buyer would be synonymous with, you know, minimal down payment. Yeah. They're Very coming little, in you know, 20%. They're coming in at 20%. Yeah, they are. They're coming in at the 10% even. Yeah. Right. And you know, it's, it, it's entirely, it's just an entirely different, uh, scenario in that regard, because they're just so much, there's just so much, and you know, the, and the other piece of the puzzle is, is that there's so much, um, information available. It's true. And so, you know, these buyers are coming in and they're, they're way more informed than they were, which allows them to make better decisions. And they ask more questions. Yes, we Thank need you. we need them to ask more questions. Mm -hmm. That's that's my PSA. Mm -hmm. Ask a ton of questions, and if your agent or your lender gets annoyed with you, get a new agent. No, seriously, get a new lender. Which is a good segue, because if you're watching this live stream and you are thinking about making a move, either buying or selling, because of been kicking the can around for so long, I have contacts all over the country. 
like Angie down in Austin. Okay. So there's a link down in the description. Click that link, fill out a real short form, uh, just some information about what you're looking to do, what you need a referral for, or maybe you need a referral for a friend. You know, it's not me, it's for a friend. And uh, fill it out and I'll get back to you and I will connect you with um, somebody top notch. Somebody top notch that, that, you know, somebody that I can stand behind. So click that link down below. And uh, we're going to get good agents out there. There's a lot of, we won't go on that soapbox about all the, uh, the, the funny agents. We good agents. Do we won't do that. Mm -hmm. Hey, I have, um, I have this other thing that I wanted to bring up uh, that I wanted to, to just kind of point out. Uh, who's this? Who's this lady? Oh my goodness, guys. Guys. So if anybody is in the Austin area, Austin, uh, not Austin. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking, Austin. I'm thinking Jersey. I don't know, how do you say Austin? Austin? Austin. Austin. I don't know how to do a Texas accent. Um, I don't know. Like Austin mean. area. Austin, Austin, Austin area. Um, look up Angie. Hey, this, is her, this is her, this is her YouTube channel. Check her out. Yeah. They can come, come find you, Angie. And, and you can help them out. And if you can't help them in the uh, Austin area, you, I'm sure you have connections all okay. over, uh, all in your, in things. your area, in the, you know, know the Texas area real well. Yeah. So I've got some so, wonderful agent partners. hundred percent. So, so anyone watching this, they got, you got to check out Angie. She'll take good care of you. hundred, hundred and ten percent. It was funny. Cause I was talking to, talking to my buddy, your buddy who was actually on my live stream last week. Um, Joey's. I wasn't talking. Yeah. I saw him on Facebook and uh, he's celebrating his anniversary. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, in New York City. He took a I picture. He took a picture of this guy. He's like, and he was, he was in, you're going to know who I'm talking about probably. But he, he was, took, he took a picture of this guy in a cowboy hat, shirtless. It was pouring rain, shirtless, tight pants and cowboy boots. And he's, he took a video. He's like, only in New York City will you <laughs> see a guy walking around the streets with, in his underwear. I'm like, Dude, that's the naked cowboy. He is the naked. He's got cowboy. a wiki page and everything. Yeah, does. I'm like, dude, He's that's the legit. naked cowboy. He's like yeah. famous. <laughs> deep in the heart of deep in the heart of New York City. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just so you know, we don't go pantsless around here. In Holy Texas. cow! That's, well, thank you for that. Thank you for that. I, you know, I, I'm sure somebody watching this was nerd was, was concerned about it. We try to keep our pants on. We got our hat, hat and boots. We need our cowboy hat and boots. You know, well, that's the thing is, is, you know, this is, I can guarantee you can't see me from the waist down. I do have pants on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just in case anybody's wondering, that's, that's, that would be highly uncomfortable, but, uh, you know, it's, it's all, it's all good in the hood. Angie, anything else before we want to part, anything else you want to add this to this uh, tint tintillating conversation? No, this was really good. I think you're stay, staying on the move like this. Y'all be watching Jen seriously because she's going to give you the latest and greatest with honest. She's going to give you the scoop, man. Directly from the, the agent's mouth. I didn't want to say horse's mouth. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Don't want to compare us to the horse. <laughs> no, please, no. Information source. That's Information we'll source. Well, again, thank you so much for watching. Angie, do you know what we need to do? Close this thing out. You know, you know what needs to happen right now? What's going to happen? Tell me. You tell me. What, I, know, I know you know what's going to What's going to happen? Yes, no. Can I slide on the screen? Can they see me slide on the screen? Michael? Thank you, everybody, for watching. Be good. Stay safe. Look both ways before you cross the street. Tune in next week, 4 p.m. Eastern on Monday for another interesting, tantalizing conversation. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs> Let's go, Angie. I'm not getting anywhere on the dance with the stars. You like music. We can be back.